Hey everybody, so with this project you are using a likeness of your own image. You're using yourself and you're also expressing uh, your own viewpoints and opinions um, through the content of the work. So I like to introduce this project by talking about representation and self. How do we represent ourselves in art and design as makers, artists, designers? And we can go back 20,000 years ago to the caves of Lascaux in France and see these really wonderful uh, cave drawings um, that were discovered um, you know, many years ago now. And what's wonderful about them is not only the drawings of the animals and the sort of hints of the lifestyle of the citizens of this, uh, this tribe, this realm, um, but are the, the way that they signed their work um, without using writing. And you can see the image of the handprints um, that are sort of emerging from a pigment. So imagine sticking your hand up against a wall and you have in your other hand a loose you know, handful of, of powdered pigment that you then blow and you get this image outline of your hand as being your signature. So we see this uh, tendency to sign our work, represent who we are um, thousands and thousands of years ago. It's fascinating. And then if we go to, um, we speed up um, to the 17th century, Red, Rembrandt von Rijn, very um, famous uh, Dutch artist, painted self-portraits throughout his entire life. And what's fascinating about that is that we see him age. So here he is 40 years later. This is pre-photography. So how would you want to document yourself um, in Rembrandt's instance? He's got to paint himself. It's going to be labor intensive. It's going to take a long time. Um, but that is through his work, we can see how he aged. Now it's so easy to take a selfie. We have cameras in our pockets um, and Kim Kardashian has totally capitalized on uh, this sort of selfie industry, has two books of selfies, um, coffee table book sized that you can purchase of just pictures that she's taken of herself. And then Beyonce, uh, this is her 2013 um, album cover, um, establishing herself as through a font, um, through a typeface, and through that very pale pink, that sort of millennial pink, before it was known as millennial pink. Um, that typeface uh, is called Knockout, if you're interested. But I don't know about you, but I remember seeing so many kind of knockoffs of this text of just the black background with the pink Beyonce um, lettering um, after that album was released. And it immediately was like, oh, this is such a rip off of what Beyonce has done. And then her um, other half, uh, Jay-Z, has Jay-Z Blue, um, which is a copyrighted color. It's this shade of blue. This is from a show by an artist named Corey Archangel. Um, this entire wall is just painted Jay-Z blue. And that blue was commissioned for a series of limited edition GMC SUVs um, that were released in like 2010, around that era. But you too, with, your, with fame and notoriety and enough money, can have a copy written color that represents you. So this is forever known as Jay-Z Blue. So um, I have a, uh, a video um, about political propaganda and some examples of posters um, that you need to watch. Um, this Shepherd Fairy poster is included. But when thinking about poster design, we can't gloss over um, political propaganda because it's um, the, the historical context of the ability for posters to visually communicate um, these broader ideas um, and sort of influence society is really important. And in the rest of this um, presentation, which you have PDF 
um, you have a PDF of, I talk about graphic design basics, type and page layout. And I love this illustration because it's true. Fonts matter. You should think of a font as a voice, the way in which you are speaking. Um, so we see here, like, you'll always be mine in that sort of top with the heart. And then we see you'll always be mine with the sort of like blood stained, um, kind of aggressive, way more visually aggressive. And then you'll always be mine, which is something well, my daughter would say to me, or at least I hope so. Um, in the PDF, this links to Thinking with Type, which is a seminal book by Ellen Lupton. Um, super important if you take the graphic design um, one class, you uh, basically read this book, you read through the website. And there's also a chapter um, uploaded from this book, Graphic Design, The New Basics, also by Ellen Lupton, um, about color that is for your reference as well as an additional source. So Ellen Lupton is a really important um, designer, curator, educator. She heads the Graphic Design MFA program at MICA and is a senior curator at the Cooper Hewitt Design Museum in New York. Um, she's one of my design hero, design and teaching heroes. And um, this links to a class that she teaches, has taught through Skillshare, which is a really great um, website to learn new skills from uh, practicing designers and artists um, about how posters work. Um, so I recommend that. Um, but really here, you know, we're going over typeface, give, just giving you these general definitions and some examples. I love this poster from 1875 that includes over a dozen different fonts, but visually they just, it all just kind of works together um, because of the kind of scale changes and shifts in size. Um, so typeface, a family of fonts, font various weights. So think light, bold, bold, oblique. Um, etc. Um, there are there's a nat an anatomy of type that I won't go into too much here. I just want you to know about that um, ligatures, ascenders, descenders. You'll go over that in graphic design one. Um, two basic kinds of type: sans serif and serif. So sans serif are geometric, blocky, um, and this paragraph is written in a sans serif font. Um, Helvetica is a great example of a sans serif typeface. It kind of always looks good. Um, <laughs> sans serif can appear kind of corporate or very um, strong, even fascist, um, and generally used as screen fonts. Um, so in screen-based design because the text is more legible. And this is an example of Helvetica used in many, many different corporate um, logos and branding. And I love this quote from David Carson too, that if you don't know anything about graphic design and you want to create a beautiful layout, just use Helvetica. And I, I agree with that. Serif typefaces are elegant, more classic, um, make large bodies of text more legible, um, are often used in book publishing and newspapers. Okay. Um, but however, a number of um, serif fonts have been designed specifically to be legible with screen-based design. Um, using use of expressive type, um, which is this example from 1787. So you'll, this is telling the story of uh, this sort of villain character, a coward, and the scale shifts that happen um, with the type sizes kind of emphasize um, what's going on in the story, which is something to think about. Um, how can you use your type to emphasize your storytelling? And typefaces have different personalities. I love this graphic. Um, you should be thinking about how you use type strategically. So if I am making a poster about a really important issue such as student loan debt, and I use Comic Sans, that's, I'm, I'm probably not gonna, probably not taking myself very seriously, and my viewers probably not gonna take me seriously either. So that's something to think about in terms of combing through all of the type, typeface options that Illustrator has to offer um, in the type kit. Using scale um, creates hierarchy within your text. 
Um, and you can see here the sort of scale shift that happens um, and it just helps you organize um, a different communicative strategy within your work. Bold sans serif font, good for using in titles, hint, hint. Text is measured in points. You will probably have papers um, that need to be in 12 point font. You know, don't use 36 point, use 12 point. Um, so point size, this is a sort of anatomy of a um, movie poster, which I really like um, how this is set up here. You can see the hierarchy of all of the information. Italics add emphasis, but so does bold. And again, you're just thinking strategically about how you, um, how you use those. This is a left flush. Um, so all of the text is aligned left. And then um, you can see the sort of ragged edge on the right. So left flush, ragged right, aligned left, also justified left, okay? And this is right flush or ragged left, aligned right, justified right. Centered, um, centered justification, and it's pretty boring um, to just have something in the center. You should think about how you can experiment with your, um, your layout um, and not just kind of lean on this crutch that is centered justification. Um, justified, how it's aligned um, on the left and right edge of the margin, that's justified. Type crime, so whenever you stretch um, your, uh, your type or squash it, that is a type, a type crime. Um, and I'll include a video about using um, outlines or creating outlines in Illustrator to adjust your text size. Um, but you can see here um, on the left, which the world is flat, um, the sort of min very minimal differences between the text it just is not very dynamic. Um, but then you see that scale contrast that really adds um, a sort of a dynam dynamism. Um, and you can see in the, the type crime, the vertical and horizontal scaling of the wide load and tight wad that's happening um, that just look distorted. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about the Swiss grid um, because again, that's something that you go over in graphic design one, but I do want you to know about it, that this was a sort of method that was established um, after World War II. Um, after World War II and World War I, there's you know, a lot of chaos um, that had just happened and using a grid is a way to create order. Um, and I'll show you some examples here. So this, these are just some examples of the international typographic style, sort of combination of photographic imagery and sans serif fonts. But everything is very organized with the Swiss grid style. And then um, the sort of evolution of visual strategies in American advertising. So go through this and just look at the examples. And I, I go through, um, I give you some up until the early 2000s. I remember these as a kid, I used to collect them. So there you have it, representation in self and type and page and introduction and go forth and start